Um, I'm also joined here today by our, our two house reporters, uh, Kari Catore and Talentino, and our business reporter, May Caravaglio, a senior reporter. Uh, I'd, I'd like to give them a chance to, to ask questions because I've been monopolizing the questions this morning. But um, let's start with Kari. Kari, are, are you ready? Uh, would you like to ask a question or two? Good morning, Kong. I'm Kari Po. So ayun po, um, going back to what you said earlier about din sa bayan niyan, Kipo, I'd just like to ask, um, as you mentioned, we experienced po problems in the earlier social amelioration programs. So under bayan niyan, how are you planning to improve the distribution of uh, the aid po? So are said, there specific measures? Yeah, so as I said, the, the biggest problem with Bayanihan 1 SAP was the lack of a list. Uh, that really caused a lot of problems, caused a lot of anxieties in many places. Um, people saying that, you know, why are we not in the list when we deserve to be on the list? We're having a hard time. And those are all valid concerns. So the, the, so we fixed it. So speaker said, lahat kasama. So let's, let's make sure that, you know, um, we, we are able to allot 1,000 per head. All right. Uh, rich or poor, um, big or small, wherever you are, urban, rural, we make sure that there's enough money allocated. Of course, we will put in um, a provision for opting out. No? Kasi alam naman natin, yung mga taga Forbes Park, no? hindi naman dapat silang mag-claim dito, right? But, so there's an opt-out, of course, uh, mechanism, but we make sure that uh, the list is inclusive. No? It, 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 it covers everyone. Right, so in short, we use the census, for example, um, as the basis, you know? um, or or uh, the census plus uh, CBMS, the community community based monitoring system, things like those. So, so on. We we there has to be some language, really uh, making it clear to everyone that this is inclusive. All right, that's the first. Um, the second is we we're putting in language also to. Um, to encourage, highly encourage the use of digital platforms. So uh, I think that's that's one way also by which um, uh, payments can be expedited. Uh, of course, ang nangyari was the experience varied from place to place. There were places where uh, digital payments worked, there were places where not. But but again, um, baka it's also because uh, it's a new thing to us. So, siguro by now, after two tranches of SAP, dapat by now, mas marami ng learnings with respect to the use of um, digital payments. So, tingin ko those are the, the two biggest um, uh, changes, right? Uh, again, trying to address what we perceive as the biggest obstacles or the biggest problems under Bayanian 1 SAP. We understand okay. for the social welfare department has already um, finished the list now. So the distribution is now up to governors and mayors of local governments. So under Bayanian Key, if ever this will be passed, it, um, will they be given additional aid since right now uh, 1,000 per head or up to 4,000 per family? Lang. So under the uh, Bayanian Key, will there be additional aid for them or will they still be counted for the beneficiaries. So yes, um, this 1,000 per head that uh, the executive, the government is distributing now. Um, so that's a similar concept. No? It's almost the same concept as what we have in Bayanian 3. Um, except that this one is um, the Ayuda that's really uh, tied up with the ECQ. Right? So again, uh, if you stay at home, we want to make sure that your basic needs are provided for it. That's the concept of the 1,000 per head Ayuda. Mm -hmm. That's being distributed today, which I completely support. Um, yung sa amin, on top of this um, special ayuda in case of a lockdown, we also have a general ayuda, meaning um, it's it's again a small assistance. Considering that we've had one year of lockdown, right? We've had one year of um, economic difficulty. Um, magbigay lang tayo ng counting relief, right? So. For a family of five, um, that's 5,000 pesos. Uh, of course, that will never be enough, but at least um, there's a little bit to, 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 to help you. And again, it's really stimulus, eh, di ba? So um, mm -hmm. try to 
to um, jumpstart the economy by by uh, infusing money so that households will spend. So that's that's it really falls under that. So there's an ayuda that's intended for stimulus, but there's also ayuda um, that is uh, tied to a health response, meaning it's tied to uh, making a lockdown more effective. To be clear, that's an added relief. Yes, there are two kinds sure. of ayuda that we're okay. proposing. The ayuda for okay. stimulus and then the ayuda mm. uh, to support a lockdown. Let's turn to our senior reporter in business, uh, Mika Navalio. You you want to ask a question? How about po ba yan, uh, Do you have an estimate how much yung impact po nun sa, sa economy? Like kung how much yung mag-generate employment and kung how much yung uh, additional GDP na from that bill? The version of Speaker Velasco is about 420 billion, no? So, actually, if we had our way, as I'm not sure if you heard about that rice bill that we passed last June. So June 4, 2020, I think that's the exact date. We passed um, an, a rice bill. So that was the economic stimulus package that or, uh, Congress originally um, uh, wanted. And, and the computation there was something like 1.3 trillion pesos. So if we had our way, dapat mga ganon, mga 1.3 trillion pesos talaga ang kailangan na stimulus to at least try to avert no, whatever economic losses uh, there was for the entire 2020. Uh, why that amount? So just roughly sp- speaking, pasensya na I'm a teacher, I'll just explain. Um, <laughs> It's just, you multiply the stimulus by the multiplier. So if the multiplier is 1.5, you just multiply 1.3 by 1.5. Magkano yun? Sorry, ha? Um, if you multiply 1.3 trillion by 1.5, it's about 2 trillion. Magiging 2 trillion yung effect on GDP. Okay? So, bakit 2 trillion? Kasi we wanted at the very least na... Um, at the very least, sana we maintain man lang our pre-pandemic GDP. Okay. Pre-pandemic, our GDP was about 20 trillion. Okay. Right after the after one year, so by December 2020, nawalan tayo ng mga 10%. So more or less, bumaba tayo to 18 trillion. Yun ang effect ng pandemic in 2020. So our hope was make the government spend an amount so that at the very least, Nasa 20 trillion pa rin tayo. Okay, so in short, ano yung spending na dapat ginawa ng government para may effect siya of about 2 trillion sa economy. Okay? So that's why we ended up with a number 1.3 trillion. So 1.3 trillion times a multiplier of 1.5 is about 2 trillion, which we thought more or less will keep us at pre-pandemic GDP levels. Okay, ano yung multiplier? Yung multiplier is, pag gumagastos ng piso ang gobyerno, yung piso na yan kasi, kunwari, gumastos siya sa infrastructure. Yung piso na binigay niya sa isang infrastructure project, a portion of that, gagamitin pambayad ng semento. A portion of that, pambayad ng construction workers. Yung binayad mo sa construction worker, kakain siya sa karinderya. And so on and so forth. Habang umiikot yung pera, yung piso ang binigay ng gobyerno, nanganganak yung piso. So, ang ending niyan, 1.53. Kung 1.53 yung multiplier. Okay? So, yun yung konsepto. Um, and that's that's the economic principle that underlies economic stimulus or yung pump priming. That's, the, that's really the economic basis. Okay. Fast forward to today. Bakit 420 lang ang final namin? Eh kasi talagang yung naging experience namin, naging... Sorry ah, hindi naging masyadong masaya kasi uh, we wanted 1.3. Ang ending natin was Bayanihan 2, which was only 165. So, ang hirap talaga. Ang hirap to bargain for the amount that we felt is needed. Kasi ang sinasabi lati, lagi ng economic managers, kulang ang pera. When in fact, noong natapos ng 2020, meron pang mga sobrang pera. Diba? So, so yun eh. So, doon kami lumulugar. Even if we want more ideally uh, we end up uh, having to consider also um, what the economic managers uh, consider 
which of course is very important. No, yung do we have enough funds and are we willing? How much of a deficit spending are we willing to have? And uh, if you ask economic managers, the willingness nila, the amount of deficit deficit spending that they're willing to have is unfortunately way less than what we think uh, we should be having. So dun po yung yun yung malaking uh, debate. So mm-hmm. having a number like 420, which is less than 1.3 trillion last year, is uh, a reflection of uh, the the tension no between between uh, the the two branches, uh, particularly uh, in terms of the philosophy with respect to the amount of deficit spending that we ought to have. Kung you mentioned kanina na uh, the, the government can tap ESP for fund for funding. Uh, last I remember last October, uh, BSP uh, provided a provisional advance to the government of the amount of 540 billion. Uh, ano pong ano pong view ng economic managers tungkol dun sa proposal niya na to tap BSP? Ano pong uh, tingin nila na will they will they will they, will they uh, borrow more from BSP or or negative sila doon so it's available it's so 282 is available we were proposing to 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 borrow half meaning 141 on top of this 540 yeah. um but they're not um as supportive as we hope they would be so i think what they're still doing is still trying to look for other sources of funds um particularly savings uh Uh, not only in uh, government agencies but also in GOCCs. In short, um, yung off-budget items kung tawagin. Because uh, those in the GOCCs as well as uh, special purpose funds, I believe these are off-budget items in which case they don't affect the deficit um, directly. So I think these are ones the, the ones that they are um, uh, more inclined to tap. Kong, uh, have you made uh, any estimate of how much would be the economic impact of this Uh, two-week ECQ. Kasi sabi ng econ managers about 0.5 to 0.8 percentage points po. Um, that's, uh, ang estimate ko is about 6 billion pesos per day. So 6 billion times how many days ba yan? Wow. Diba? It depends on how many days. Right? Times 14. So, times 10. Times 10, yeah. 6 I sorry, was it six? Sorry, not, not six, but rather eight. Ten, because the weekend then, so. Eight billion, eight billion, eight, eight six billion. billion are, but if it includes the nearby provinces, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, it's about eight billion a day. So, um, parang tayong nasa tindahan, no? Nagka-compute. Eight times 14, 112 divided by 200. Um, it's about uh, half a percentage point of growth. So that's just for two okay. weeks. Half a percentage point of growth for two weeks. Ang halos natin sa buong 2020 is 9.5%, di ba? So ito, 0.5 just for two weeks. Wow. Reina, you want to ask? Um, Kong, uh, I think there, um, there's more than one version of Bayanihan Trisa House. Uh, kamusta na po yung, uh, yung mga bills na yun? And... May napagkasunduan na po bang amount ang house lawmakers and economic managers, a final amount under the Bayanihan Tree? So you're right. There's six versions actually. So there's six versions of Bayanihan Tree. And um, some of them were filed with a different committee. So many were filed with the Committee on Economic Affairs, but I think there were two that were filed before the Social Services Committee. So right now, ang naging decision was... Uh, for the, all these to be heard jointly by these two committees, right? Um, at the moment, there's a TWG that was created by the Committee on Economic Affairs. Uh, so that's what, uh, and that uh, TWG is now consolidating those that are under the Econ Affairs uh, Committee. So medyo may magulo ng konti, but um, we're sorting it out. Ang idea naman natin is mapag-isa lahat itong anim na to, no? And uh, I think we're, we've we've had some headway. Um, I just saw the latest substitute bill. Mukhang naman it's looking good. It's it it has uh, embraced many 
uh, of the of the main provisions of these six bills. So may, naging inclusive naman siya. It's reflective of all six. Ang main naman talaga doon is really ayuda. I think no one will disagree that we really need to give ayuda. So the amount uh, we are looking at somewhere close to 420, uh, slightly lower um, as a total package. But again, um, as to how much um, will be given immediately, kasi ang mangyayari dyan realistically is it's probably going to be a phased implementation uh, because we can, uh, we can only fund stimulus as we free up resources. So most likely than not, it's going to be phased implementation. So ang tanong na lang is how much is going to be made available immediately. At yun ay, uh, that's going to be dependent on what uh, the econom- economic managers will say uh, that would be available. Kasi as you know, for any special appropriation, may requirement eh. Kailangan ng uh, certification from the treasurer that the funds are available. So so that's why, that's the reason for why we need to work closely with the economic managers. On another matter po, uh, will you file a bill to overhaul the public health system? That, that actually is part of the objectives of the universal healthcare law. So tingin ko, I will uh, take time out and study it more, considering that they had not really rolled it out yet. The thing kasi is, um, if a, uh, you can only say that a law is broken if it, had, if it had already been implemented pretty much, and then you'll see the weaknesses. Pero ang problema kasi dito is hindi pa talaga siya roll out in a big way. So ang hirap naman na, na mag-file ulit tayo ng uh, another bill amending uh, the universal health care law in a big way. So right now, yung mga lumalagpas lang na amendments on the universal health care law are really just the small ones, the small tweaks. Like for example, yung suspension ng feel health uh, rate increases. That was something that Speaker and I also filed recently, which uh, the Congress already passed. Uh, so yon, that's an amendment of the UHC law, pero small provision lang. As a malawakan, tingin ko we have to wait a bit. Otherwise, baka masayang ang efforts. Well, look, the question is is this, you know, we've been talking about the economic uh, um, uh, side of, of, of this crisis. But, you know, uh, we have to remember that you know, this year is the prelude to next year's election. I, wa- I was wondering if there is a political equation to consider here in terms of the government response. Uh, do, you, do you think it's, it's fair to ask if there is a propensity to do the financial assistance because of, 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 of this reason, the political consideration, or it, it, there is really uh, an, an, an undeniable economic um, uh, argument for it. Um, you know, you, you mentioned Congressman uh, Senator Pacquiao earlier, and uh, I saw his interview with Malu uh, uh some time ago, and he was bewailing uh, about the, uh, you know, the the, the government, uh, the increasing government loans to to, uh, to to give out to people and uh, stimulate the economy. What, what's your view? Hmm. Um. <laughs> But I'm not an expert on politics. Ironically, I'm a politician, but that's not my expertise. <laughs> but okay. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Let me let me um, try to to be very honest. And this is like yes. based on my my own small world, like my district. Like when I go around, do I feel like the, there's a lot of politics uh, there? Okay. Again, there's a propensity for for any program to be politicized if the beneficiaries are limited. Okay, that's I think that's a basic rule. Again, so nung naging naging limited yung SAP, uh, na politika siya in many places, right? right? And, and so so it, it's really that. So you have to make sure that. Uh, whatever interventions you have, if you want to be very sincere, it's as inclusive as it can possibly be. So that right. insulates politics, right? That's number one. Number two, so now bakuna, right? So it's bakuna for all. We want everybody to be vaccinated. So now at least, okay, that's a good start. We're trying to be less political there. But now it's a prioritization, right? right. So it's a prioritization naman, thankfully, it's somehow based on risk. 
Okay, so of frontliners and pinaka risky, let's start with them. Uh, uh, seniors are also a uh, high risk group. Let's start, th then let's, uh, th they're the second group, et cetera, et cetera. So having all of these things in place uh, really reduces all of these um, political noise. Uh, when it comes to stimulus, um, what I find, um, it's a little bit different because mm. it's the Congress people who are pushing it more naman than the senators, right? Uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I guess, I don't know. I, 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 I want to end. <laughs> I mean, you know, you just, I just say that that's... I'm sorry for putting you on the spot, Kongsa. <laughs> yeah, um... Maybe I can answer off the record. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me ask something that's more in your comfort zone, and I, I know you have to go. This will be our, our last question. And we were talking about you know funding the the government response, and, and I I brought up uh, Senator Pacquiao a while ago uh, raising the issue of of the increasing government borrowings. But if you look at it, um, um, correct me if I'm wrong. The the debt to GDP ratio is somewhere around 20 to 25% right now. And you know, 20 years ago, during the time of Mrs. Arroyo, when she was president, it was a 100% or close to 100% of GDP. So um, is there space now to, to, to spend more? Because I think that's your, that's your thrust, I believe, right? Is to, to increase spending to, so that we get back to our pre-pandemic uh, uh, trajectory. Is there, is there room there or do we have to be a little bit more careful now? Okay, so those are two things and I'd like to yeah. separate two things. One is the spending, the other is the debt financing. Right. Okay, so the spending, I'll start with the spending. So the question is, um, how much of a deficit spending do we do? Okay, right. so that's the question. Um, ako, I'm more, ano eh, I'm more parang, uh, I want really to do more deficit spending than unfortunately, what economic managers uh, feel we should. Um, and, and they cite, for example, the deficits of ASEAN countries. And they're um, somewhere in the 6% range, whereas tayo nasa 8.9. Okay. But we have to put things in perspective. Pagdating sa economic stimulus, we're kolelat. Uh, Singapore, 18% ang stimulus spending nila relative to GDP. I, I think Malaysia is 15%, uh, Thailand is 12%, Indonesia is 5%, Philippines is less than 3%. So in short, if you take Bayanihan 1 and 2 spending and divide it by GDP, ours is very small, it's less You're than right. 3%. Yet, yet, our deficit is bigger than all of these countries. So it sounds like an irony, di ba? Kasi the more you spend, dapat mas malaki deficit mo. Right? Kasi right. deficit revenues minus spending. Eh. Right. The more you spend, dapat mas malaki deficit mo. Pero bakit tayo baliktad? We're spending the least for stimulus, but our deficit is the highest. Right? That seems oh, like it. We have a high multiple, like, probably. That sounds like it's, it's um, counterintuitive. Uh, but the answer is, it's in the denominator. It's the GDP. It's the GDP. Our GDP really fell. And it fell because of two things. Because now we're not spending mm. enough, precisely. And number two, we have the worst COVID situation. So, so long, and it's related eh. Pag mas malala ang COVID situation mo, talagang you expect your GDP cannot be as high as you want it to be. So yun eh. So it's really, kumbaga, it really is a chicken and an egg. You have, I think, this is my personal belief, um, government has to spend more. Because if government spends more, the GDP gets bigger. Um, ito na yung sinasabi natin na we are a consumer-driven economy. So if we have households spend more, then our GDP will become bigger. And with a higher GDP, we are in fact able to reduce our deficit because deficit is really computed relative to the GDP. So, so yun eh. So it's, it's that. Um, it's a sort of uh, philosophy that I adhere to, which is why um, I believe really in um, having a bigger um, deficit spending today, because that's what the that's what is called for. 
Okay, now, moving on to the second point, which is financing. Um, right now, the debt-to-GDP ratio is, I think, about 57% na. Okay. 57%. It used to be higher, as you had correctly pointed out, Link. Uh, I think during um, the time of Pinoy, nasa 70 yata eh. So from GMA 100, went down to 70. So mataas pa rin. So in fairness to our economic managers, they've been able to bring it down to the 50s. Um, uh, and we have a very good credit rating. So what if we take out a loan of 400 20 billion to finance by any entry that will bump up our GDP, debt to GDP ratio to about 59%. I've heard economic experts, I've heard economists, I will not talang name who, but, but very good ones, very credible ones, saying that a 60% uh, debt to GDP ratio is manageable today. And I believe, I believe them. Um, yung, during the time of Marcos, when we had a very, very bad uh, debt-to-GDP ratio, very, very high debt-to-GDP ratio, it was because partly that yung inuutang natin, hindi natin ginagamit productively. I mean, you know, that's mm. the sense of it, di ba? Yeah. Kung umutang ako at imbis na pinang-negosyo ko, pinang-sabong ko, and that's precisely why we need an economic stimulus package. So if you take out a loan, you have an economic stimulus package that is rational, that makes sense economically. Hindi malulos tayo yung utang. So, so yun yun eh. Um, of course, it's frightening when you hear about very high numbers, 57, 59, 60. It's frightening. But remember, the times today are very different from the times when we had a very bad um, debt situation. Right. right. Um, but maybe before we let you go, uh, maybe a final message or uh, a statement that maybe about something we haven't asked? Yes, it's really just, uh, it's really a time to think out of the box. You know, um, we can't just keep extending, extending the ECQ without um, changing what is broken, right? And and so I think it's, we're there now. I mean, you know, we're resilient as a, as a people. Um, and we're also smart, right? So let's just like put all our heads together and and uh, keep an open mind to to change, no? Um, as the president said, change is coming. So so you know, even change in uh, in this context, diba? I mean, dapat magamit yun eh. Yung change is coming in this context. So if you started out with a policy that's not working. Let's all be open to the idea of changing something that is broken. Diba? And that's the only way out. We cannot have a protracted surge in COVID. It's having more cases is directly related to having a GDP contraction. Ganun lang yun kasimple. Mm. The more COVID cases you have, the more difficult your economic situation is. It's as simple as that. Diba? So, we have to break that nexus, and the way to do it is not to make us choose between buhay or kabuhayan, between health and wealth. No, think out of the box, and there are many ways, I assure you, of really doing both health and economic objectives at the same time. Congressman Kimbo, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been a very interesting uh, interview. Uh, I know now. I. Now know why they call you Teacher Stella. I, I've learned a lot this morning. We hope to have you over again soon or yes, when, yes. when your schedule permits it. Yes, anytime. Eh?